Welcome to Francis Quilts, the site dedicated to the wonderful art of quilting, with a few other fun things thrown in as well. If you like what you see here, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can be notified of future videos. Hey guys, welcome back to Francis Quilts. Today I'm excited to say that we are on blocks 11 and 12 of our 12 Ways to Quilt a Sawtooth Star. I don't know about you, but around about block eight or nine, I was starting to wonder what exactly have I gotten myself into. But I'm so excited to show you these last two blocks today. If you are just now joining us for the first time, I would encourage you to go to my website, which is francisquilts.com. When you get there, click on the Challenges tab, and then just under that, the 12 Ways tab. And that will take you to the page that has all the introductory information, all the resources that you might need, and all of the videos for the first 10 blocks. So without further ado, let's head to the drawing table. For block number 11, we are going to do this design or something very similar to this design. It is a mixture of straight lines in here and, and arcs right here. Now you may look at it and go, wow, that looks super complicated, and it is, but I think once you see it drawn, it, you'll have a better idea of how to do it. And I think it will end up looking very, very uh, fancy, very complicated, but not be so bad when we're actually quilting it. I'm going to use this sheet to show you the guidelines that we're going to mark. And then when I actually start doing the, you know, quote unquote quilting, I'm going to move uh, to a larger block so that you can see it easier. It's just a little, it, it may get a little confusing if we're doing it on something that is this much smaller than what we're actually going to be quilting on. There are a lot of guidelines for this one. The first is going to be a line drawn from corner to corner and on each side. Next, there are going to be guidelines drawn from this point of the flying geese to that one, or like that, and that. And then finally, we are going to draw a line somewhere close to the middle of this flying goose block right here. All right, that is all of the guidelines. So now let me switch over to something larger so you can actually see how it is going to quilt. All right, here we're gonna work on a little bit larger piece. This is actually the full size of the block. I think it'll make it easier for you to see the quilting lines that we're going to do. Uh, you can see that I have drawn in all of my registration lines or my, my uh, pre-marked lines from here and here. I've done the four lines in here. You will also see that I added a line on each of these flying geese blocks, each of these um, triangles. As I was quilting it, I realized that it really needed to have that extra one in there. So I have added those now. So we are going to start somewhere in here. And we're going to be looking at, first of all, these four squares right here. Our dot to dots are going to flow this direction to that one, over to there, back up there, and back there. So you're gonna have this little uh, little square sort of thing coming in here that we wanna make sure we keep that in mind as we go. I also wanna remind you that every one of the arcs that we're going to draw is going to not touch a quilted line, it's going to touch one of these guidelines. So let's start here in this section right here, this point right here is where we're gonna, gonna aim for. Uh, obviously that's the, the intersection of this line and this line. And we're gonna do our dot to dots going this direction. So we'll come from here, we will come out to some point there, and we'll come back again, hitting that point right there. We'll do it again over to here and back up. Now we're gonna put another one on the inside. So we're gonna come here and down to here, and then back over, and then back up to here. Now we're back at that point. Now we're ready to do some arcs, and we're gonna draw an arc from this point that we just hit to this point right here. We're not gonna do this point that was sewn that is quilted in, but this point right here. So we'll have an arc that comes from here over to there. Then we're gonna do the same thing and have an arc that comes from here to this point right here. Now in this case, we are hitting where the, uh, where the dots and dots were, but we're also hitting on that um, uh, guideline that we've drawn. So now we'll have an arc that comes from here over to here. You see, basically we're doing a little half circle right there. So we're here, now we're gonna come out this direction. So we're gonna come up here. While we're here, 
we are going to do our dot to dots in these triangles. Now we're going to come back and we're going to make an arc on this other side. Come around to there. Now we are in position to do the next dot to dot going this direction. So again, we'll come out from here and we'll come up, back to the point, down, back to the point, around again, to here, back to the point, here, back to the point. So now we're ready for arcs again. Remember the arc is starting here and it's coming to here, not here, but here where, where this intersection is. We'll come over, do another one on the other side, coming back to the center. We'll arc up, dot to dots, arc back down. I'll go ahead and draw this entire thing out. Uh, it may help you to see it uh, done a couple more times. So let's see if I can keep it straight while I do it. So there we have the center section quilted and our little bow tie dot to dots here. Now we're ready to work this outside border. We're going to always start in one of the corners is the easiest thing. And we're going to, first thing we're going to do is quilt a line from point to point. So going across like this. And then now guess what we're going to do? A couple of dot to dots. Here, back up to that point. We missed that point there and back to the point here. And then we go again inside it just to fill it in a little bit more. Now, when we are here, we are going to ditch stitch up to this line right here, which I have forgotten to draw. I did forget a, a line when I was doing this. We also have a line coming across here like this and over here. All of my nice, neat, straight lines have just moved away. That's all right. So we're going to ditch stitch up to here, to this draw, this line that we've put in. And we're going to do a dot to dot, coming fairly close to the point at this one. And then back, we're going to come to right here, where our guideline meets the seam. Come back to there. Now we're going to come down this way, but we're going to leave a little bit of room. We're not going to get as close down here as we normally would. We're going to give it some room and we'll come here and back up. And then let's do that again because we like doing dot to dots. And then to get ourselves in position to do the next one, we're going to do one more dot to dot from this point down to this point right here. So come from here down to here and then from here back up to here and then we're going to stitch in the ditch to here and we're ready to go again so let's do it again line across dot to dot two times stitch in the ditch dot to dot remember not coming down as far so we'll come down to about right here one more inside. Whoops, that should have come all the way to there. Sorry, I'm not thinking while I'm drawing. Down to here and back to here. And then we're going to have one more from here down to here. Now, I'm going to quit talking and just finish drawing these last two. Maybe I can concentrate on them and not mess them up. So here we go.
so there we have the entire design drawn out. Like I said, it's a little cumbersome, it's a little complicated, but if you can just keep your mind in it while you're doing it, I think you'll find it actually will go together pretty quickly. So let's head to the machine and see if I can indeed keep my mind in while I'm sewing it. All right, we are set at the intersection of these two guidelines. And the first thing we're going to do is our dot to dot from here out to here, not hitting this point. We're gonna miss that. And we're always gonna hit that point down there. So let's do that. And now let's put another one inside it. All right, now we're ready to do our arcs. Remember the arc is going to be on this drawn line, not on this sewn line that we've just done. So we'll arc over to this point right here. And now we're going to arc from here back down to this corner. This is the intersection of those two guidelines right there. Basically we're creating a half circle here. Now we're gonna arc up to here. And throw in our dot to dots. Now we arc back around the other side of this guideline. And now we're ready for another dot to dot. If you are more comfortable with it, you might want to draw a, a guideline along this right here so that you have a point to stop at. Uh, it's not crucial, but if that makes you feel more comfortable, then please feel free to do that. So now we have an arc. Again, the arcs, remember, are not on the quilted line, but are on the guidelines. We'll stop there. We're gonna arc again over to this other guideline. up and I think you got it from here
So we have our inside section quilted now. We are going to break thread and move over to the uh, outside border and pick a corner to start. Remember that the first step is a line from here to here. And then we add some dot to dots in here. Okay, that dot to dot is added. So now we're going to stitch in the ditch up to right here to this guideline that we have marked. Notice I'm very slow when I'm stitching in the ditch, especially without the ruler. Okay, remember this dot to dot is going to come up fairly close to this point. and then it's going to come back down and touch that guideline that we have drawn. The next one is going to come down this direction, but it's going to leave some room here. Uh, you know what, I think I'm going to draw a guideline in there just to help me see it. All right, that will give me a better guide to be able to see where I'm headed to as I'm headed back this direction. It's always harder when you're quilting behind you. Remember, this dot to dot is kind of a funky shape. It is not a nice kite, even kite shape. It's because we're going to add another line here in a minute. Now this line is going to come from this point down to this point that we've marked right here that's in the middle of the block. And then the last one from here back up to here. All right, now we can ditch stitch down to here. And let's start the process again.
well here is block number 11 finished um, I will be honest with you this is not my favorite block I'm particularly not happy with this border it, it doesn't continue it doesn't have a continuous line there um, I could come in now after the fact and add something else in here and I might do that um, or I may just leave it but I think of all of these it's the one that is my least favorite sadly it's finished we're gonna leave it where it is well, believe it or not, we are now ready for block number 12, the last block in this uh, wonderful challenge that we've been doing. This is the idea that I'm thinking about, and you may look at this and go, wow, that looks hard, but it is one design that is repeated over and over again. Let's see how it looks. As with all of our other blocks, or many of our other blocks, we're going to have a couple of guidelines that we're going to put in using a water-soluble pen, or a washout pen of some sort. Uh, they're going to be these two corners right here are all we're going to do is just one X inside that big square in the center. Now the, we, the shape is going to be the same in every single one of these triangles in here and the same basic shape in all four of these. So once we learn that design, we're going to be ready to go and it should be easy to finish up. The first step of this design is going to be to draw a, an arc shape up touching that point up there and an arc shape back down. When we've done this design before, starting at the bottom, we have just done a rounded shape. This time I want us to arc all the way up and touch the point. Now we are going to do some shapes off to this side right here and off to the side right here. We've done something similar, but I want these to be a little bit smaller and narrower uh, and not have as much curve in them. If you remember the ones we did before had this huge curve in them. We don't want that curve in there. We want them to be um, just a little bit straighter and, and to come back to this point. We're always going to try to work our way back to that point. So the design may look something like this. It's going to come out and just have a slight curve in it and then back. Out and a slight curve and back. Slight curve, back. Slight curve, back. Now here you see I put four in here to fill it in. When I get onto my quilt and I start quilting it and I see how big this shape actually is, it may end up being three or it may end up being five. The bottom line is once I decide how many I'm going to have on each side, I want to have that same number on each side all the way through the block. So we've done that side. We've come back. We're going to come back to the center here. And this time we're going to come out and we're going to curve to the other direction. We're not making a big circle. We're just doing a little curve. And remember when we're quilting, when we get to that point, we're going to stop for just a second so that, um, so that that point is sharp when we come back down. Something like that. Now, we're also going to, when we're going around this, we're going to stitch in the ditch to this corner. When we're at this corner, we're going to do the same thing. Now, we before again, when we did this, we did this nice big circle-y thing. This one we want to be fairly narrow and just have an arc that comes up and then back down like that. Maybe a little fatter than that, but you get the idea. Oops, I forgot something. When I arc up, yes, guess what? I'm going to do those. Got to remember those. I always forget them at least one time in each, uh, each video. So we're going to come back down here. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up and just a slight curve and back down, up and just a slight curve and down. And again, I don't know how many of those there will actually be once I start quilting. But once I decide, I want to keep the same one, same number in each one of these blocks. So uh, one little hint when you're doing this, this curve is coming around like this. When you first start on these, kind of follow that curve and then come out just a little bit. Follow the curve and then back follow the curve and then back. So we're going to do this design. When we have finished this one, we're going to end up back at this point and you guessed it, we are going to come over here and we're going to do the design again. Let's see if I can do it sideways. Up and back, out in little, two, three, four. And then over here, one, two, three, Oh, whoops, I went to, sent that one a little bit the wrong direction, but that's okay. Again, finish here, stitch in the ditch to here. Remember, this one is a little bit longer coming up, and when we get up here, yes, we got to do those. And then we're going to come back down. We're going to come following the curve and out, following the curve and out, following the curve and out. And again, there may only be two there. Just see how it, how it quilts. Curve and out, 
Oops, that's not really a space. Let's see if we can get a little space in there. Okay, so we're going to go all the way around this pattern doing this design, just stitching in the ditch to get us to the new area. Then we're going to move inside and we're going to be working within this triangle right here that you see that comes up to here. This is drawn on and then this seam line here. And guess what? We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to come up here and we're going to come into that center and there. And we're going to come over one and try to get close to this line. Don't, if, if you can keep from touching it or going over it, that would be great. But just um, get close to it. Same thing over here. Okay, when we get here, we're going to have to get to this point over here. So we're going to stitch in the ditch. And you know what? We could actually do these when we're stitching in the ditch. That might even be a better time to do those designs rather than trying to do them as part of this, this section here. So you may want to do that. And then I'm going to ditch stitch over to here. And this time when I do it, it's going to be coming up and meeting in that, that center section. And coming back down and then each one of these when I'm coming out is going to be close to the other one that I've done that's why I was saying you need to make sure that you keep the same number in each one of them like that and back and then this one just come over here obviously we don't have anything to match up to at this point but something like that and that and what's going to happen here is this this center section is all going to become one design so basically you're going to have this line right here is going to be coming from here to here to here to here all the way around until you have this one design so that's it okay once you have mastered this particular design right here you are good to go for this entire block so uh, let's head to the machine and see how it looks well, I think we need a trumpet fanfare right now since we are starting the 12th and final block of our challenge. And it's fun that this one is all curves. I think it'll be a fun one to quilt. I think I'm going to start in the center and do my, my designs in each of these triangles. Remember, as I am quilting from here and across to here, as I'm traveling in the ditch to here, when I get to here, I'm going to do those uh, final four uh, sets of dot to dots in those, those uh, geese portions. So let's start. As I sat here and got ready to, to make this first loop up like this, I realized that I would probably feel more comfortable if I had some guidelines in there as well. So I'm going to draw another set here and here. And honestly, we'll probably continue those on down here. I just think it may give me a little more comfort in doing um, that first loop that's going to be the center of this this. Um, design if I have some some guidelines to work from. So for the last time I'm going to say it, here we go. First, remember, is an arc from here up to this center point up here where all of our guidelines meet. And remember when you're making these long arcs that it's better to look at the point that you're headed to rather than following each little stitch along here. Set your eyes back here and let your hands just go there. Note that 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 first loop I made is fairly thin, but that will give us room. And I'm thinking I'm going to do one, two, probably going to do four of the loops on each one. I'll have to see if I can do them without marking them. We'll try it and see how we go. Yep, four is going to work fine.
So I'm going to stitch in the ditch to this point out here. Now we will ditch stitch from here back to the center and then we'll start the process again. For this one, I find it much easier to do it in this orientation rather than trying to do it on the side. So I probably will turn this block every time before I quilt. Remember, I'm trying to come fairly even with the one that I quilted before.
That is our inside section done, and now we're ready to do this outer rim. Uh, let me mention here when I was doing these, you may have noticed I was not always coming back to that center point. As they went out further, I just came back in a little ways until I met the previous line, but I did not physically go back to that center point until this last one. I figured there's enough thread buildup there anyway, and so if I don't have to uh, add more thread to it, that's the better thing to do. So going around here, it's going to be pretty much just more of the same. We're going to make our design. We're going to uh, ditch stitch over to here, and we're going to make the design again, and ditch stitch to here, and just keep going around. Please do notice that the plumes on these squares are longer and narrower. The others, we have more of them because they're having to spread out into a larger area, but these were a smaller area, so the plumes will just be longer.
And these are the last few stitches in the 12 blocks. Hallelujah. So this is our last block finished. I am, think it looks really nice. I apologize there were a few stops in the taping. Um, I had some issues with some thread breakage and ended up having to change a needle. And then one time I just went completely off the rails as to where I was going. Uh, that is why I ended up going in and drawing some guidelines in these corners as well. So remember, before you start quilting this when you're drawing your guidelines, you probably want to put them in each of these uh, areas right here. So add those, those guidelines all the way around before you start quilting. I love this kind of lotus flower look that we have going on here uh, in these triangles. You can't see it a lot in this, this video uh, in the center, but it actually does form a nice design there as well. So number 12 is done. Woohoo! We are through. We have quilted all 12 blocks in the 12 Waist Challenge, and I'm so excited to say that that part of this quilt is finished. Um, obviously, today there was one block that I wasn't that happy with. I'm sure you're going to have blocks that you're going to feel that way as well. But the point here is we were trying lots of different designs in different blocks just to see what we liked, what we didn't, what worked, what worked for us that might not work for somebody else. And it's just been a great way for us to learn new things together. Next week, we will be back with one more video where I will talk about the sashing and borders and getting this quilt finished up. Thank you for staying with me for all of these weeks, and I will see you one last time. Remember, if you like what you've seen, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please check out my website and daily blog at francisquilts.com, and I can be found on Facebook and Instagram at francisquilts. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon.